Hello there. I am Dr. Subramanian Kannan, consultant endocrinologist and head of the Department of Endocrinology, Diabetes and Metabolism at Narayana Health Hospitals, Bangalore. On the occasion of the World Thyroid Day, we are recording a series of talks and my topic uh, for this would be on thyroid cancer. Thyroid cancer is on a rise in both the developed and the developing countries. And the cancer that is most commonly diagnosed is papillary thyroid cancer. The reason for this is not very clear. One of the possibilities could be that we are doing more imaging studies, not only for the neck, but also for the chest and the brain, which result in thyroid nodules being picked up as an incidental finding. So the rise of small thyroid cancers have become quite high. What are thyroid cancers? Thyroid cancers are abnormal cells or extra growth in your thyroid gland, which have the potential to stay within the thyroid gland or spread outside the thyroid gland into the lymph nodes in the neck or in some cases can also spread to other parts of the body, particularly the lungs and the bones. When you hear the word cancer, it always frightens you. And the thoughts of chemotherapy, radiation therapy, losing hair come to your mind. The other thought that comes to your mind is the word cancer always indicates urgency and the need to do something very quickly. Now in thyroid cancer, particularly with papillary thyroid cancer, we always take a step back. We reassess the situation and then decide what is the best way forward. Let me explain to you. Papillary thyroid cancers are generally slow growing indolent cancers that usually spreads to, usually stays within the thyroid gland and in a few patients may metastasize or go to their lymph nodes in the neck. And as I told you, in a few other patients, it may go to distant parts of the body. The good thing about papillary thyroid cancer is that they are slow growing and they are indolent, which means that we have time at our disposal. In the past, everybody who had papillary thyroid cancer underwent a complete thyroid surgery and then subsequently radioactive iodine therapy and were put on thyroxine replacement from then on. We have now come to learn that we can individualize therapy based on the patient's risk and the spread of the cancer. So when you are diagnosed with papillary thyroid cancer, the first step that we do is to relook at your neck very carefully. And this requires a very dedicated ultrasound evaluation. This is called a preoperative lymph node mapping. This lymph node mapping is very crucial because this tells us if the thyroid cancer, the papillary thyroid cancer has stayed within the thyroid gland or has it, has it moved to one of the lymph nodes in the neck. Now, if the thyroid nodule, uh, thyroid cancer is confined only to the thyroid and there are no lymph nodes in the neck, the surgeon would then remove your thyroid gland and carefully look for lymph nodes beneath the thyroid gland, which we call as the central compartment. In case you have lymph nodes which are on the either side of the thyroid gland, then your surgeon will not only remove the thyroid gland and the lymph nodes underneath it, but will also remove the lymph nodes on the either side of the neck. These are called lateral neck dissections. So it's extremely important that when you are getting operated for thyroid cancer, a proper ultrasound of the neck is performed and a mapping, a road map to the surgeon, either by the surgeon himself performing the ultrasound or an endocrinologist performing the ultrasound or a radiologist performing a dedicated ultrasound for this particular mapping is extremely crucial. Now, why this is important is because thyroid cancer's best recovery or remission state is decided by the first surgery.
If the first surgery is incomplete and there are lymph nodes left behind in the neck, that is the most common reason is that a dedicated neck ultrasound was not performed to alert the surgeon that these are lymph nodes that probably needs to be looked into at the time of surgery. So message number one, if you have papillary cancer and you are undergoing surgery, it's extremely important to get a lymph node mapping before the surgery. Now the lymph node mapping can be more extensive including a CT of your neck and your chest in case there are deeply seated lymph nodes in the neck as well as the chest. Your endocrinologist, your surgeons will probably advise you on if you need further imaging like a CT scan or an MRI. As a next step, after you undergo surgery, you the pathology report will be reviewed by your physicians and your surgeons and then you are subjected to something called a iodine whole body scan. Now iodine is a very important, iodine scan is a very important step in the assessment of distant disease to see if the thyroid cancer has spread to other parts of the body including your lungs, bones or any other lymph nodes in the neck as well. And this important step again uh, requires a proper nuclear medicine facility and a good nuclear medicine physician who will coordinate the iodine whole body scan. Now typically when you undergo the iodine whole body scan, you will not be taking thyroid medicine for about two to three weeks time. At the end of three weeks, you will be asked to take a small dose of the iodine tracer and 48 hours later, a whole body scan is performed. A critical test at this point of time is your pyroglobulin and antithyroglobulin antibodies. These are cancer markers. They don't have much relevance before the thyroid surgery, but they have a lot of relevance after your thyroid surgery. So at the time of your iodine scan, your nuclear medicine physician and your endocrinologist will generally advise you to get a TSH, a thyroglobulin and your antithyroglobulin antibodies. These tests will also tell us what is the disease that is left behind in the body or what is the disease that has been completely cleared by the surgery and that will also decide what kind of dose of radioactive iodine therapy that you might need. Subsequently, after you have either gotten your radioactive iodine therapy or your physician or your nuclear medicine doctor says there is no need for iodine therapy, then you are kept on surveillance follow-up where you are periodically checked with neck ultrasound and serum thyroglobulin and antithyroglobulin levels. Now, this is the usual pattern of treatment for papillary thyroid cancer. There is no role for chemotherapy or radiotherapy except for a small fraction of patients in whom the traditional approach does not work. So take a step back, look at the neck carefully with a proper preoperative neck ultrasound. After your surgery, extremely important to undergo the whole body iodine scan along with thyroglobulin and antithyroglobulin. Your nuclear medicine team, your endocrinology team and your surgical team will co collaborate and ensure that you have a best possible outcome for the treatment of papillary thyroid cancer. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.